that you protect us, Jesus. We can't thank you enough, Jesus. I can spend time complaining, Lord God. Or I can spend time exalting you, Lord God, for the many provisions that you've made for us in the name of Jesus. The fact that it did not take us out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, clap our hands in offering of thanks. In offering of thanksgiving. In the offering of praise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I dare somebody to go a step further and stand on your feet as an offer of a thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus. As an offering of praise. If he's been that good to you, in the name of Jesus, that you can yell out a hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, not being ashamed of who's going to hear you. If in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes it's feel good to say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says it's the highest praise. Disrupted 
by what the Lord is doing. How many of you were here Friday night? Raise them high. Wave your hand. Was that not awesome? The manifestation of the Lord and his angels and his working was in the place. That hasn't changed just because we had a day in between. What God wants to do here this morning is still the same. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I know there's still a Justin Jen. Can you hear me back there? Okay. I'm glad to see you, Jen. Got those babies here on that, on that bus this time. We're so glad. I don't have my, I don't have my glasses on, but all, all the barber children here, these children come faithfully all by themselves. Isn't that awesome? I think somewhere in the, in the word of God it says that a child would lead us. These children come faithfully. Some of these children are already up here worshiping. We hadn't started a song yet. Now I know to you they may just be playing and having a good time and goofing off and all of that. But I believe it said that David played before the Lord. If you have never read that scripture, I encourage you to do so. All across this place, let's lift up holy hands before him. Let's magnify him. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him praise. He is, after all, the Lord of lords and the King of kings. He is the master and the lover of my soul. He is my salvation. He is my shield. He is my rock. As already has been said, he is my provider. He has been keeping me. He has been sustaining me. Every day he forgives me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am complete in him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we lift up our hands. God of mercy and grace, it is you. We adore. Oh, hallelujah. It is you. Our praises are for oh, only you. The heavens declare. Hallelujah. It is you. We lift up. 
worship you. God of mercy and grace. It is you. It is you. We adore. It is you. Our praises, Our praises of you came to do but I came to praise the Lord well well did you were you telling the truth if so why don't you find somebody else so and say so get out of my way don't hinder me thank you brother Brown You just need a little bit of room when you want to display how good your God has been to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not going to apologize hallelujah. if you don't want to worship, if you don't want to pray, but my God has been good right. to me. Hallelujah. When I wasn't worthy of it, when I wasn't as good to him, he was still good to me. He was still ushering out mercy and grace and long suffering yeah. and temperance. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for that this morning. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to pray to the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to pray to the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to I don't know 
But I came to sing and shout I don't know what you can do Shout, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let's do that again. I sing yeah. a sing and shout. I don't know what you can do, but I can to sing and shout. I do, but I can to sing and shout. I don't know what you can sing and shout.
of you may have heard this before. I've told this, this, this story before. Sister Yabora. There's nobody like Sister Yabora, I tell you. She's a funny one. But she was, years ago, she was telling me a story. I don't even remember what the story was, to be, be honest with you. Forgive me, Sister Yabora, it was a while ago. But while she was telling me whatever what was going on, she said, First Lady, you know how sometimes you just don't feel like being upset or it was something like that. Depressed. You remember that conversation? And I'll be honest with you, at the time, I didn't say it to her because I, I wanted to set a good example. But in my mind, I was like, nope, I don't know what that's like. Because when I want to be depressed, I'm going to be depressed. When I want to be down, I'm going to be down. But I didn't realize what I was saying. Because by my own admission, it was a choice. I'll say that again. By my own admission, it was and still is and will always be a choice. God showed us that from the very beginning in the garden. I think he was trying to make a point. It's a choice. And if you're honest, sometimes you don't always choose well. If I'm honest, I see some of you nodding your heads. That is very good. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I don't always choose well. Sometimes I just, I just, I just want to sulk. That's not good though. Especially all that the Lord has put at my feet put on the table that I can eat from it does him such a disservice when I do that we're all gonna go there I'm not I'm not saying that we're human we're not God I said we're not God and only perfection and completion is in him and we're gonna continue to worship but I just I feel right here I want to I want to do something Where's Sister Lucille? Did she go out? Where is she? Oh, hey, Shorty. Why don't you come on up front, darling? This is a sweet, sweet lady. Sister Lucille, how long have you been with us? You don't know? It's been a good while. I understand that because when you're having fun and you love the folks you're with, it really doesn't matter how long. You just know you're having a good time, right? That's right. But Sister Lucille has, um, at this point in time in, in her life, needs some additional and consistent. She has, has some assistance, but she needs some consistent assistance to care for her. And so she it will be moving um, to Virginia to be closest to her last surviving daughter, is that correct? And she's going to um, be in an assistant living facility, which is pretty cool. That's gonna be awesome. And while we are ecstatic for her, we're also a little sad too. Is it okay to be a little sad too? Because this will be her last service with us. I know, where everybody can say, oh. <laughs> But she promises that she's going to come visit. So, Sister Katharina, if you, can, if you can possibly tear away from that baby, you and Sister Marissa in particular, as her home group leaders, and a couple of other ladies, why don't we just come, we're going to really quickly pray for her and love on her. And we're going to thank the Lord for the time that we've had with her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you, Father. We thank you for this precious, precious saint. We thank you for loosening your angels about her, for keeping charge over her. I plead the blood over every part, her mind, her body, her health, her spirit. 
in the name of Jesus go with her father go with her go before her Lord strengthen her as only you can we thank you for the time that we've had with her we thank you for filling her with your precious spirit we thank you Lord God for her going down in the name that is above every name no one can ever take that away from her hallelujah 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 oh hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we give thanks for the time that he's given us with her. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You can be seated for a moment. While you're seated, won't you shake someone's hand nearby that you didn't come to church with this morning? Won't you shake someone else's hand? I love a friendly church. God. Amen. All right. Anybody glad to be in church this morning at the house of God? Amen. I'm so glad you're here also. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Um, oh, some, did someone leave me a gift? Isn't that, isn't that nice, y'all? I prefer apples, but... Now, actually, I love chocolate. Is this, is this is for you? you? Okay, I'll leave that up there. Whenever you see stuff like this, you know my wife is involved. Because I don't need all this. I just want what's inside. I tear stuff open like a caveman. She calls me a caveman all the time because I just rip stuff up. Gifts and all that. Who cares about all that gift wrap? Matter of fact, you don't have to wrap a gift. Put it in the brown paper bag. That's good for me. Amen. We're so glad we have Sister Flowers. And uh, it's been with us for the last uh, several years. And we're going to miss her. Praise God. Amen. I I'm so glad you're here this morning because I believe with all of my heart that God has something in store for each and every one of us. I believe He has something in store each and every service. Uh, there has been something bubbling, if you will, and uh, if you weren't aware of it um, on the surface, uh, you would think this, this, nothing is happening. Um, and 
but I, 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 I have a sneaky suspicion. If you and I will just open up our heart and our spirit in just a moment here, God is going to impact your life like never before. You have to have faith for it, though. You must believe it. You must open your spirit up to him. And I believe God is going to impact our lives. Amen. Before we go any further with all that, if you're a Sunday school age kid, I want you to scream out really loud. Well, I guess we don't have Sunday school today then. That sound, that sound like the parents screaming out. <laughs> That's what that sounded like to me. Sunday school age kids. I think we have some treats in the uh, refrigerator, like some cookies or whatever. Sunday school age kids. We're going to line you up and we're going to make sure you get some treats today. Okay? You know why? Because we're not going to have Sunday school today. Oh. But I promise you this week and next week, we're going to make sure you get treated right. And we're going to have Sunday school next week. As a matter of fact, on July the 15th, that's next Sunday, correct? It's going to be game day next Sunday for the children. And I'm talking about, I was going to say some serious gaming, but it's not serious. It's all play stuff. So uh, we're going to have a good time. I, so Sunday school, I do apologize, I, you know, that you're not going to be going there. But I feel like God is about to do something in a minute. And I don't want to disrupt and distract that, what God is about to do. And I believe some of you who are a part of Sunday school, I believe that God is going to touch your life, your teachers. It's his desire. You're just going to have to respond to it. But before we get into that, we're going to do a little celebration right here. So, I have a Holy Ghost and baptismal certificate to present to Jack Melton. I want a little drum roll on this one, or a bongo beat. Because I'm going to get this right. I have a baptismal certificate to present, drum roll, to Joy La, Joy La, Joy La Goggins. Praise God. See, I was great. I was getting ready to blow it again. Well, I did, and I got it right. I'm determined I'm going to get that name right. Joy La. I have a baptismal certificate to present to Kimberly Waterman. I got some people happy about that. I have a baptismal certificate to present to Ashley Smith. Come on, hallelujah! Congratulations. Praise God. I have a, I'm going to probably get the, the last name wrong, I'm telling you right up front. I have a baptismal certificate for Sierra 
Is it with it or white it? With it? I got it right. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Right. Praise God. Last but not least, I want to look at the name, make sure I get it right first. I have a baptismal certificate for Leticia Moore. Thank you, Jesus! Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah! I'm sorry, I forgot. Turn me down. I forgot the noise is blasting up here. That's why I can't. These musicians. I'm like, all right. So I don't want to blast anyone out so you can turn it down a little bit. Amen. Tell the Herman down back there. Really appreciate it. You can be seated. Amen. Uh, I guess my wife has something she want to present. Is that all you want to do? You want to present this? You do. All right, come on. Come on. Stuff like this just thrills me to no end. Remember last week we gave away our, our high five winners? Remember that? And I explained high five. Some of them, it was the first time for you. We're still doing it. We're still going to keep doing it. But I realized we had so many submissions that I had a whole stack still at home. So forgive me for that. I did give out those. I have some more to give out. And it didn't, it didn't change the results except in one area. Remember we had three people that came in second place and so I had to give them consolation chocolate. Remember that? Come on now. Well, after doing a recount, we actually had a four place second place. I mean a four, four way tie for, for uh, second place and the other one is to Bryant Brown. <laughs> So we got to give you some chocolate. Yay! So, so thankfully, even before I got, I got to what, the, what it was, and I called him and I said, I don't even know what I said. And he said, hey, first lady, you sound really excited. I said, because I am. I love doing this and I and very much appreciate it. Uh, Brian, if you don't know, he does a lot around here. We fire him for jobs and then hire him back. and. Just, we do, we really do, and he, he's, uh, he's great with that. So thank you, Brother Brown. We appreciate you. Praise God. All right. Well, we're going to receive an offering in just a little while here. A few moments of time. Uh, I think I noticed that we've... Uh, this morning we we're scheduled to have a are we going to have the baby dedication this morning is it going to happen this morning say again okay all right praise god so uh this. how many love the lord this morning Most of you are aware uh, that we've been teaching on a particular uh, subject, and uh, we're going to be doing that for the next little while here on that same subject, because there's a lot to it. I will tell you this, uh, if the Lord ministers to you, touch you. There's something in your life here this morning. I pray that you would uh, do whatever you can to be here this evening. Because I'm going to be teaching. I don't plan on teaching this morning. I believe the Holy Ghost desires to minister to you. Touch you. 
but I believe uh, it's the will of God to uh, further that this evening and teach you so you won't have to go back down paths that maybe you've gone before. How many know it's the will of God for you to be whole? How many want to be whole? I don't like being down. I don't like feeling down. I went to the hospital uh, yesterday. My got a call early yesterday morning. Uh, well, actually, I got a knock on my door early yesterday morning. My wife and I both we turned off our phones uh, Friday night, and. Uh, Lo and behold, when we turned our phones off, there was an emergency. So I got a knock at my door early in the morning. So my wife, are you expecting someone this early in the morning? She said, no, I'm not expecting anyone. This is Saturday morning. So, okay, let me get up and see what this is about. Looked out of the window, realized who it was, and... Uh, Found out that it was it was in a medical emergency. My uh, daughter, middle daughter, was rushed by ambulance to the hospital. I spent the entire day in the hospital, I was trying to get, con gain my composure. Throughout uh, yesterday, just it threw me off. I I have a certain regimen and a routine that I pretty much go through, uh, at least to some degree. And it just threw me off, and I got to the hospital, and I worked in a hospital field and inside of a hospital pretty much uh, uh, probably for 30 years or 20, at least 25 years. Um, I had worked in a hospital, yeah, maybe 20, 25 years I had worked in a hospital or uh, setting to a certain degree. And uh, it dawned on me that I hate hospitals. And uh, I just felt the, it was just a spirit, a heavy, weighty spirit in that hospital setting. And my youngest daughter told me, she made a statement, she said, I hate hospitals. And I didn't say anything, but I, I concur. And I was thinking about it and I was contemplating why I hated it. And it was because of the spirit that's in the hospital. No one is in there bubbly, cheery, and whatever. And just the, just, and I, I just looked at everyone, looked at people, patients, and overwhelmingly it was just a, just a feeling of being down mainly being uh, in a place of not being whole I just looked at people conditions I looked at old people walking around and younger people people screaming and and and, and, and literally screaming and and crying and I'm just looking people getting out of the car limping and and it, and I just looked at at people and even those who weren't there for themselves they were there for someone else and and just the weight of just seeing people and I thought about it I, I thought that we we are so fragile as human beings and our life is just a vapor we we're here today and gone tomorrow life is so short and life expectancy is so short and too many people spend their years wasting their time in, in such a state of oppression and depression and hopelessness and despair and trying to make something out of it so they have happy hour and they uh, have recreational drugs and, and they have things that maybe preoccupy your time and everything else, something to probably pick you up but still down inside you're empty. People are longing, people are hurting, people are looking and the world will try to tell you it has the answers that will satisfy you but nothing in this world was satisfied. I saw the elderly people and hurting people in the hospital and I 
thought about the pain and the suffering and seeing little children in the hospital thinking about why is this little child why why would this little child have to suffer and go through what that child had to go through and just all those things just kind of was going around in my mind and I realized I was so thankful for just having God in my life having the hand of God in my life the spirit of God the love of God and his grace but I in all that feeling all that inside of me in my being I had this resounding peace and I told my wife I said normally when something happens there's a medical emergency and some of you know some of the things that my, my daughter is going through uh, medically and physically and 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 um, and sometimes I, I, I it used to bother me because this is my child and while she's an adult this is my child and I care for her. I don't want anybody that I love to go through or to suffer but I had so much peace in my spirit uh, to the point that it was kind of scary because it wasn't apathy. It wasn't that I didn't care. But the spirit of the living God had given me so much peace. And I'm here to tell you this morning. That same God is here this morning to do something in your spirit that you never, never would have thought was possible. To give you peace that pass all understanding. To guard your heart. To keep your mind. That God where no one else see you hurting, no one else see that you're in pain, no one else knows all the suffering that you've gone through, no one else can see all the times you look at yourself in the mirror and you blame yourself for where you are and the things you've been through. Maybe you blame someone else and you focus on what they've done to you and, and, and the abuse that you've suffered, the wrong that has been done to you, the hurt and pain, the, the wounds, the words that have been spoken over you, things that people have done that you loved and loved you and, and you, you can't make sense of all that you can't get it back but the God that created you is his intent to make you whole it's, it's his, it, is, it is his intent to shape and to mold you to fashion and form you and I'm not talking about your outer man I'm talking about your inner man and I believe the Holy Ghost is desiring to do that here today. Yes, too many times, too many times, we put on a facade, and we put on a smile, and we tell people I'm fine, and it's okay. But if the truth was told, we're hurting. Yeah, at times we put on a smile and we can get past it. For a little while, we don't think about it. But then there are moments that us and that's like a, a video that's played all over again of that thing that was done, that word that was said, that hurt and that pain. And now all over again, we are experiencing it. And we are feeling it. And all over again, we're reliving it. But I'm here to tell you the God that created all things is here to give you healing. And I pray right now that you would receive it. Why don't we begin to pray right now, church, all over the house. I feel the Holy Ghost so strongly in this place. Shando Rojo Mojo I want you to just close your eyes right where you are. Some of you want you to just lift your hand. The Holy Ghost is moving upon you right now. Just open up your spirit and respond to that. You may not even understand what I'm saying, what I'm communicating, and what I'm talking about. You may not even know what it means to open up your spirit, but just close your eyes and get your heart and your mind on Him right now. The Holy Ghost is sweeping through this house right now. 
Block out every bit of distraction. Come on, the Holy Ghost is moving. Just stay right where you are. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Church, why don't we just begin to pray right now? Church, lift up your voices and begin to pray right now. Somebody go on the intercession. Amen. Right now, somebody begin to tra trail. In the name of Jesus Christ, every hurt, every wound, every broken heart, God, every wounded spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I loose the healing balm of Gilead. I loose the power of the name of Jesus. I loose the spirit of the living God right now. Rivers of living water to flow in the house of the living God among these people right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. Shekahanda Lolobosanda. Come on, right now, won't you just open up a little further? In the name of Jesus, why don't you acknowledge? In the name of Jesus Christ, you can't heal yourself. You can't take back what has been done. You can't unwrite the history. In the name of Jesus Christ. But just open up your heart. Open up your spirit. Every thought that has been bought at you. Come on, that's it in the name of Jesus. I pray the love of God right now. Come on, let him heal you. Come on, let him heal the wound right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, just open up right where you are. God would have Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Shakarahanda la Kahamahaya. Jesus' name. Jesus name. Jesus name. We need you right now. We need you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let your healing virtue 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise God. I want you to listen up. I want you to listen up. I want you to understand what's tra- taking place right now. This wasn't the medicine. This was just the anesthesia to get you for the right for the medicine. This was just the IV line going in. Get things started. This, was, this is just the prep. This is, this is a good start, but this was just the prep. The Holy Ghost is not going anywhere. He's just preparing us. He's bearing witness that God is trying to do something right now. Praise God. Holy Ghost is not going to go anywhere. We can go ahead and ministers and workers go ahead and turn to our seats. Not trying to stop the flow of the Holy Ghost. When you first go into any treatment area, the first thing they're going to do is just assess your situation. They're going to probe a little bit. They're going to pick and say, "Where's it hurt right here?" They're going to take some vitals, take some vital signs, and they're going to gather some data, see where you are. They're going to hook an IV line up to you if you need that. There's any type of further invasive procedures, they're going to give you some medicine, due time, maybe some anesthesia if you're going to have surgery. The Bible says that the Word of God is alive and is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's the thing that does the surgery in our lives. And the Word of God is going to begin to operate in here in just a little while. God is confirming to you and with you uh, of the proper diagnosis he just diagnosed some things right here but we're about to go a little further in our treatment but I will tell you this right now for some of you just gonna have to go a little further Some of you are going to have to go a little further in opening up your spirit. God already knows where you are anyway. And he knows better than you do. He knows you better than you know yourself. And if you don't think that's true, I have a question for you. In two hours, exactly, where will you be? What room will you be? In a minute and second, you don't know. But he does. When will you breathe your last breath? You don't know, but he does. What difficulty will you go through next month? You don't know, but he does. He knows everything about you. He knows the good things and the bad things. And everything that has been done to you and in your life up to this point. He's the only one 
that can make all things work together for good. You can't do that by yourself. You think it's impossible for him to take all your mistakes, all your failures, all your hurt, all your pain, every experience that was negative in your life. It is impossible for you to make that thing good and right. But God said, I can take it and work it for you good. That's what the Bible says. I can take everything. Things that you hold your head down about. Things that you feel sh so shameful about. That you wouldn't tell a soul. Things that make you angry and frustrated and fearful. Your worst nightmares. God said, I can take those things and work them for your good. But you must believe that. You must go a little step further and open up to him right now. In order for him to do that. Now, God is about to help some of you because there are a couple of things that some of you are dealing with right now. And I'm not trying to get too heavy. That's why I'm not getting into teaching. But some of you are angry and you don't know why you're so angry. You, you won't call it anger because you think anger is when you are venting and you are lashing out against someone and vehement. And, and, and you, you call that anger. But anger is wrapped in a lot of different disguises and faces. Anger is in, in, etern internal, I'm sorry. But what you do on the outside and lashing out. See, anger, if you have wrath, you have anger. And a lot of times we associate wrath with anger. You see, wrath is when we lash, lash out. And we think as long as we're not lashing out, lashing out, I'm sorry, that we're not angry. I mean, we're, that, that, that uh, we're not angry. Just because we don't have wrath, Meaning lash, la lashing out doesn't mean that we're not angry. Some of us have hurt and pain that we won't readily acknowledge. We don't want anyone to know it because it makes us vulnerable. We have feelings that we don't even want to deal with. With the help of God this morning, the reason why I, I stopped this is because many times we have gotten to the point that we just did just now, just a few minutes ago, and that touched our emotions. And God is wanting to get beyond our emotion. There's a point in you, there's a part of you that's even deeper than your emotions and your emotions they are very deep and you can come into a place like this and you can feel things in your emotion but God is saying I want to go further than your emotion because you're more than just emotion God is love but he's more than just love this is why I didn't want to have Sunday school this morning because of the direction. We normally give a hand clap and all that in, in what I'm about to say, but I'm asking you not to do that right now. But I do want to welcome you if you are a guest. I want to welcome you here this morning. We normally give a big rah-rah, but you can understand why I'm not doing that right now. We really welcome you in our service. If this is your first time after service, please, uh, right here, we have a guest hospitality area. We have a free gift for you, a presentation we want to give you and, and do for you right after service. We're going to take care of that. We want to welcome you back again. If you're welcome, well, watching by way of the Internet, we want to welcome you to our service by the way of Internet. But the Holy Ghost is moving in this building. I pray that God will move in your household if you're watching. I want to talk to you this morning on the subject of healing the inward man.
We're going to talk about healing a wounded spirit. You don't have to stand. I know we stand a lot of times and honor the word of God, at least the opening text. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And you've been coming for the last few months, or I mean last few weeks, this is familiar. And we're going to talk on this subject. I don't plan on being uh, long at all. Again, if you're feeling a witness in you, you need to come here tonight because we're going to be teaching this tonight so you can get some answers. We're just ministering. We, we, we're ministering this morning. The Holy Ghost is ministering this morning. But you're going to need some answers. And I can't answer it in this atmosphere. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 23. I'm going to read the King James Version first, and then I will go and read the Amplified. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you would turn with me also to, well, you won't be able to do it unless you have an amplified version. Or if you have an electronic device, you'll be able to go there. But I'm going to be reading from the amplified version. I do believe we have it available to be placed on the screen. If we do, uh, please uh, let's put the amplified version on the screen. Thank you very much. So the amplified reads it this way. Now, my... I'm sorry, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. That is, separate you from profane and vulgar things. Make you pure and, unho and whole and undamaged. Consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to uh, talk to you a couple of minutes uh, on this uh, passage here, kind of delve into it a little more, and then we'll see what God does. Before we, before we go any further, we're just going to pray this together. And I want you to pray this. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I pray that you would touch every mind, every heart, every spirit. I pray that you would eliminate every distraction. I surrender my spirit, my heart, and my mind to you in Jesus' name. Every human spirit right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you, Lord, can have free course. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you to not allow yourself to be distracted here. The kids are just kids. Let them be kids. If you don't focus on them, they can't break anything. They'll be fine. Amen. Sometimes you just got to lift your voice above them. They'll be fine. Sometimes the kids will, you just, can't, you just got to make sure you allow them not to distract you, keep you off course. That's all. Amen. Now, I please keep the amplified up there until I maybe turn somewhere else. I want you to note and to notice that it's God's intent 
that his peace and his sanctification through and through. What that entails is that God's spirit is wanting to penetrate every aspect of your life and every aspect of your existence. And it's willing and wanting and desiring to go beyond your comprehension and beyond your mind. Every molecule, every atom, everything, every cell, everything that makes you who you are, God's spirit and word is able to work in and through you if you desire to and you want it to. But you have to hunger and you have to the thirst and you have to desire it and you have to want it. You have to say to yourself, I'm going to get everything I need to get from God. There is more to God than my recognition and my understanding and my uh, ability to reason. And, and I want to yield everything in me, all of me. He said, I want to go and get inside of you through and through. I want to separate you from anything that's vulgar, anything that's profane, anything that's contrary to me, contrary to my holiness and my existence, contrary to my nature. God is able to make you righteous and he's able to make you whole. He's able to heal your mind. He's able to heal your heart. He's able to take care of any profane thing in you, anything that you're going through or suffering and turn in terms of sin, in terms of worldliness, in terms of unrighteousness, the God that said I'll die for you yes, can make you whole. The adversary in your flesh will tell you you can't flee from those things and you can't escape those things that you'll always be bound and you'll always be in chains and and you'll always be subject to sin and you'll always be subject to all these uh, things of immorality i'm here to tell you god is able to deliver you if you want to be delivered God is able to set you free if you want to be set free. You don't need alcohol. You don't need nicotine. You don't. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You don't need a woman. You don't need a man. You don't need anything else to try to make you complete because nothing else can make you complete. Only the one that created you can make you complete in him. God desires to make you whole. God desires to make you complete. God desires to get you to lift up your head, lift up your hands, to walk in a different way. Not down and cast down. Not out. Not hopeless. It's God's will to get you free from oppression and depression. Shame and sorrow and grief. Weeping endure for a night, but it's the will of God for you to live a life of joy. You say, how can I escape this misery? How can I get out of my dilemma? I'm telling you what, you can have peace in the storm. You can live in such a place of peace where nothing can touch you. Nothing can penetrate that peace. Oh, hallelujah. See, some of you don't believe that. I'll tell you why you don't believe that because you only look as far as your flesh and your body. I'll tell you why you don't believe that because you only look at your heart. But somewhere in your inner man, in your spirit, God said, I'm able to make you whole. The Bible says, peace God gives. That guard our hearts and keep our mind. The word peace means to be made at one again. The reason why your life seems so confusing. The reason why you can't get along with people. The reason why things are always seem to be going chaotic in your life. And there's always seem to be havoc that's going on. And some of you know what I'm talking about, but you're looking the other way because you don't want anybody to know what you're going through. You, oh, hallelujah. 
We get addicted to all sorts of things, and, and, and whether it's video gaming, or, or whether it's sports, or, or whether it's music, or whether it's nicotine, or whether it's drug, or, or sex, or, or maybe it's the internet, and then every explicit thing on the internet. I'm here to tell you that God is here to set you free if you want to be set free. You don't have to live bound. You don't have to live purposeless or hopeless. Deliverance is in the house this morning. It's God's intent to separate you from every profane thing, every vulgar thing, everything that has you bound, the mindset of this world, the lust that's in this world. Come on, somebody. You can be set free if you want it. Why don't you just stand up and tell the devil, I'm going to be set free this morning. I'm going to be healed this morning. I'm going to be whole this morning. I'm going to get what I need from God touch me Lord reach down in my innermost being you gotta have faith you gotta want it the Bible says they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled shall be filled if you're empty you don't have to leave empty they that hunger and they that thirst after righteousness will be filled i pray that each and every one of you thirst and hunger for something more something deeper something greater something better that when you leave out of this place you'll feel with something new that it will get a hold of you and change you forever you say that's not possible with God all things are possible he's able to do all things and everything he's able to do exceedingly abundant above all I can act and, and everything I can think of God is able to work in my life the scripture says that he wants to make you whole to sanctify you through and through he desires to make you pure and undamaged. How in the world, if I'm damaged, I can be made undamaged? If we would be honest with ourselves, we are walking around as damaged products. Damaged property. Most of the time, it's not our fault. I said most of the time, it's not our fault. Many of the times, someone else did it to us. We blame ourselves. We say, how could we have, have allowed them to do this to us? Why did I allow it? And then we get hard because we're not going to let anybody else touch us anymore. No one else is going to hurt us anymore. No one. And then we build up all these walls that we think that will. And, and, and let me tell you, that won't work anyway. Those walls that you're building, they're made of straw. And the adversary can huff and puff anytime he wants to and blow down your little straw house. But God is saying, I want to build something in you. I want to make something in you. I want to make an edifice where I can dwell. I want to make a temple where I can dwell in. But you got to want it. He's able to take a, a damaged product. Can you believe God desires to make you whole? I said, it's God's intent to make you whole. But if you keep on looking at the damaged good and say, I'll never, then you never will. If you keep saying, I can't, you won't. I'm here to tell you that God is able to make you whole. Some of you, I don't know your life story. Some of you, I don't know anything about you. But I can see it on your face. I can see it in your
up on the wall. God is designed to make you whole, and you must allow him to. You let anybody else and everything else affect you, you might as well give God that much open crack door. You must give God that opportunity. You let everything else shape you and mold you. You let everything else affect your spirit. Why don't you let God, the God of spirits, affect you? Everybody else trampled in your life. Everybody else shaped and molded you. Everybody else put words in your mouth and words in your ears and words in your mind and words in your heart. They say you'll be this and you'll be that. You, they, they shaped you. They molded you. They made you into whatever you think you are. And God says, I know you better than anyone. And I'm able to make you just how I purpose to make you in life. You are a product of your environment. You are a product of your upbringing. You didn't do it to yourself. Everything around you shaped and molded you. You didn't have a choice sometimes in the matter. You were forced into certain things. It was peer pressure, putting pressure on you. You got put up in certain situations. People took advantage of you. Someone abused you. Someone raped you and molested you. Someone told nasty things about you. Someone violated you. They hurt you. They shamed you they've done all these things make you who you are and you walk around hurt walk around frustrated angry confused you have a wounded spirit Many times you were not able to identify. You would look and say, what's wrong with you? You would say that to yourself. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know why I made God. Why did you make me like this? And why did you allow this my way? I'm here to tell you this, to, to, this morning that God is trying to tell you that I can make you brand new. Some of you say, well, I was born this way. God is trying to make you born again. The scripture tells us here that he wants to make you whole, to consecrate him, you to himself, set you apart for his purpose. And he, he, want, he desires for your spirit. Everybody say your spirit. You don't have to say this part. And your soul and your body to be kept and to be found blameless. You say, what? I understand that my body can, can, can be full of blame. I don't quite understand that my soul can be full of blame. And yet you tell me my spirit also can have blame. I'm here to tell you right now that you can have blame. Not just what you do in your body, but your soul can be blamed. For what is the soul? The soul is your thoughts. It's your mind. And it's your heart. It's your feelings and your emotions. And you can do things out of the wrong mindset. And you can do things out of the wrong thoughts. Sometimes your thoughts are not right. And sometimes your heart is not right. And God said, I want to get your heart right. And I want to get your mind right. I don't want your mind to be felt full of blame. I want it to be blameless. I want your heart to be right. He said, I can work on your heart. I can work on your mind. But you got to open your spirit up. He said, I want your spirit to be whole. I've found that well-meaning people, people who want to live in God and walk in God and to please God and to give their life to him. There are many of you who are sitting in this seat. You've said, I'm going to give my life to him and I'm going to be this in God and I'm going to be that in God and I'm going to do this right and I'm going to do this right and I'm going to get rid of this in my life and I'm going to put away that in my life and I know this isn't right and I know this isn't good for me and, but I still find myself doing those things and, and I can't shake those things and, and then next thing you know I find myself back where I was or maybe even felt worse than that and I just can't get to that place in God that I know deep down inside of me I want to get to your heart want to be there but you can't and that's because you're going to have to go further than your heart 
God is talking to you. God is trying to get down in your spirit. The Bible says God is a spirit. And they that worship God must worship him in their spirit and in truth. That's why I keep telling you this morning, open up your spirit to God. He's going to heal your spirit this morning where you won't struggle like you struggled before. God is about to change some people in this place this morning. God's about to set some things in order this morning. God is about to set some things right this morning. But you need to understand it goes further and deeper than your heart. And it goes further and deeper than your mind. It goes further and deeper than your body. It's down in your spirit. And if you can just allow God to get your spirit man right, you can be made whole. Because God starts deep down on the inside, down on the end with man. But you have to be honest with yourself and you need to be open and say, I have a spiritual wound. I've been spiritually wounded. Somebody did something to me that affected me. Maybe in my childhood. Maybe things just didn't go like I thought they would go. And, and see, for some of you, things didn't go right in your life. And, and all of a sudden, you had a wounded spirit. Maybe some girl or some man broke your heart. And maybe things were hyped up a certain way. And then you were let down. Maybe someone, or maybe someone took advantage of your kindness and your niceness. And you said, I'm not going to let them do that anymore and so now you felt I'm going to be in control oh the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody in this house this morning and you walk around thinking you're in control when your life is totally out of control and you say it was something that was done to me that causes me to feel like I feel Someone did something else. They should shoulder the blame. Our mind says, well, if someone did something to me, if my parents did X, Y, and Z, and if I was, you know, things happened in my life, why should I take the blame? Someone else should take the blame, right? No, that's not the way it is because we are the ones who carry it. See, someone can do something to us once, maybe twice or three times, but when we carry it, we are allowing them to do it over and over and over again. Oh, hallelujah. You see, when you choose not to forgive someone, oh, hallelujah. Some of you, your spirit has been wounded. And it's going to stay wounded until you forgive. That's where anger comes from. I understand it makes you angry. Oh, hallelujah. I understand what they did was not right. Oh, somebody's hiding right now. Come out. Come out. Don't hide. You go to the doctor's office, you don't go hide in the corner somewhere. You come on out, you let them examine you. You let them figure out what's wrong. I want it fixed. Are you willing to be fixed? You say you're trying, are you trying to say I, I, I need to be fixed? I'm trying to say we all need to be fixed. Ever since the fall of man. Doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes us unwhole. And sometimes we equate being unwhole with being a bad person. You're not a bad person because you're, you're not whole. You're not bad because you're not whole. But don't do, the, don't, don't do that to yourself. Don't stay that way. One of the key things, and I'm going to be teaching about this tonight. I'm going to talk about the signs of a wounded spirit and how to be set free from these different things, the, these symptoms. Because it's one thing if I start treating a situation, an ailment, whatever, but then you're dealing with the symptoms also. And so what the physicians normally do, they'll, they'll give you two types of medicine sometimes. They'll, they'll first take care of that thing, so they may give you antibiotics, and then they'll, they'll give you some sort of cough medicine to deal with the, to deal with the symptoms because the symptoms, are, they're, they're the things that are keeping you up all night. 
and you still can't get any rest because while you're being treated for your illness, you still have the symptoms. So they, 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 they want to treat the symptoms and they want to treat the illness. I'm here to tell you that you and some of you, you just been treating the symptoms and they come right back again. Some of you have been dealing with your shame and it, it keeps coming back again. Your heartache keeps coming back again because you hadn't really dealt with the issue. But you're going you're gonna to have to be willing to forgive. I don't care what they, they've done to you or what you think they've done to you. And sometimes it's our own perception. But you're going to have to be willing. You know what? Not forgiving somebody, you know what that's like? When you choose. Now, I want you because you get quiet when, when I start talking about forgiveness. And some of you kind of like, I can't find myself forgiving that person. I can see it. I can't forgive what they've done to you. Do, you. do you know what not forgiving a person or a situation is like? And I'm going to tell you when, you, when you're holding a grudge because of a situation and you don't have any face you can put on it, I'm telling you whose face you're putting on it. You're putting God's face on it. Because when you're angry at situations and you can't, oh, hallelujah. And you have this grudge and everything else and you can't figure out, I don't know who to blame. You're, ultimately, you're blaming God. Because ultimately, you know he's in control. Yeah. Yes, sir. And if you love me, God, why will you allow this to happen? And that's why Paul said, this is one thing I do, I, I exercise, to be void of offense towards God and man. But you're going to have to be willing to forgive. Because not forgiving someone is just like this. You standing right in front of the person that did you wrong. You drinking a bottle of poison. And just trying to look at them and, and, and thinking they're going to die. Yeah. You're sitting back drinking that poison of bitterness. And waiting for them to die. And all it's doing is killing you. Bitterness is not going to do anything for the person. But you can be set free. I'm looking all over the sanctuary and there's some people that need to forgive. There's some people that need to forgive parents and people need to, let me tell you something. Jesus, the Bible said of Jesus. He said, you see my wounds? These are the wounds I suffered in the house of my friends. When Judas went up and kissed Jesus and betrayed him, he said, friend, you betrayed me with a kiss? I'm calling you friend. You see, those who are closest to you are the ones who can hurt us the worst. That's why we find it hard to forgive our mother and our father or our husband and our wife or those who are close, our, our, our boyfriend and our first love. I'm talking about healing the spirit. You see, when you, you can get healing on the outside, your physical body, you know you can get to heaven with one arm. You can get to heaven with one leg. You can get to heaven with one ear, one eye. And when the Bible talks about making you whole, a lot of times we just want our, whole, we want our body to be whole. You can get to heaven without, as a matter of fact, everybody that gets to heaven, you, when you die, you died from something that was medical. Hello? No matter whether it's a, a, a little child or you were in a car accident, someone was in a car accident, or even from old age, they call it natural death. All it means is that you got old. Your cells start breaking down. The blood didn't flow right. Your organs broke. So everyone dies from something that's related to your body. Even if it's suicide, you take your own life. Something happened within your body. And so God is not, so your body, may, you, you're going to get to heaven. You can get to heaven without a perfect body. You can't get to heaven without a, a heart that's, that hasn't been healed. You can't get to heaven with a wounded spirit. 
Oh, see, some of you, I just messed you up right now. And I'm almost done. Now you're ready to get out of here. So you thought you could take that to heaven. You can't take bitterness to heaven. There's no place in it. Because your body is not getting to heaven. Your spirit. Your spirit and soul. That's the only thing that goes up. And that's why your spirit has to be right. Oh, hallelujah. But you have to be willing to open up your spirit. You need to be honest. You see, someone doing something else to me, they're responsible for them. God is their judge, not me. Now, brother, just, I, I'm not into slapping people anymore, and I agree slap you. Don't worry. His mother back there said, let me touch my son. Now, see, I can just haul off and just slap you, right? And it would be wrong, right? And I go on about my business. And then somewhere you didn't know, I, I um, repented. And I got right before God. And I said, God, forgive me. I, I've done wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And God forgave me. And the next thing you know, I'm on the right path with God. But you, every time you see somebody look like me, you slapping them with words. You cutting and maiming anything that, that reminds you of me. You turn things up. You killing people. You got that bitterness in your spirit. Now the person that did you wrong is going to heaven. But you, you hadn't made that right. Or, if I, I'm doing something, and I'm working, and then I accidentally slapped him. But I didn't mean it. But he thought I meant it. He thought I meant home. I mean harm. And he, I can't convince him it was an accident. I know you meant to hit me. <laughs> and I'm going about my business because I know, I know what my heart was, and it wasn't intentionally. But guess what? He has in his spirit, he has a bad spirit and a bad attitude, and he's going to let that send him to hell because of an accident or because something was unintentional. Some of you are walking around with some unintentional wounds. And the person didn't really mean to do it. Now you're going to lose out and you won't be healed. I'm talking about a wounded spirit. I believe it's the will of God for you to be healed in your spirit. Turn with me to one passage of scripture. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse number 27. I'm going to be teaching on this tonight. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Now, I know that seems a little strange in the King James, so I'm going to read the NIV, the New International Version. The human spirit is the lamp or the light of the Lord that sheds light on one's inmost being. The Amplified reads it this way, the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching and examining all the innermost parts of his being. The Bible says that we're made of body, soul, and spirit. And the scripture tells us that your, your human spirit, we're not talking about God's spirit, but your human spirit is the light that God has given you. That God has given you to be able to search all aspects 
of your inward man. God has given you a light and a gift. And that's your human spirit. And the purpose of your human spirit is to be able for you to examine anything that's going on in your life. When your heart is all messed up. When your heart is broken, when your heart is overcharged, when your mind is just going out of, out of, out of whack and you just can't get your thoughts right, and when you're, when you're con- living in confusion or frustration and anguish, when you have anger and all that, all those things that we experience, the Bible says that it's our spirit man, our inner man, that God has given us to shed light so we can receive what we need from God so God is able to operate but what if your light meaning your spirit man is dim and the light has gone out how are you going to be able to recognize the healing that you need I'm here to tell you that some of us our light has gone out most of us I'm talking about your spirit your human spirit. Sometimes things in life, pressure, situations we find ourselves in. Some of us, we do this. We hit the rewind button. We find ourselves saying, you know what? I'm going to move on from this thing. Some of you have said, I'm going to forgive this person of this thing. I'm not going to carry this thing. And then what happens? You find yourself in a situational place where you're thinking about that all over again. And those feelings come back all over again. Those emotions come back all over again. And you say to yourself, I thought I was over this. I thought I was past this. Or how about this? You've already asked God to forgive you of something. Something you did 20 years ago. And it comes to your mind and all over again you're saying, God forgive me for this. You did something 50 years ago. And you're asking God all over again. You just can't get it in your mind that he's forgiven you. And so you ask him over and over and over again for that same thing. Can anybody identify what I'm, what I'm talking about this morning? That's because it's not in your soul, your heart, your mind. Our spirit has been wounded. I'm going to talk to you tonight, those of you who are willing to come. From the very beginning in the garden, how the adversary told Adam and Eve that they were naked after they sinned. And the one that tempted them to disobey God was the same one that said, see, you're no good. The same person that tells you something bad about yourself. And so he attempts you to disobey God. He tempts you to do something contrary to the will of God and the purpose of God. And then he has you to focus on yourself and look at you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And then he walks away. It's not because of our flesh. It's not because of our mind and our heart. It's because we have a wounded spirit. He damaged the spirit of man. Tempted man to do what was contrary to God. He broke the relationship that God intended for man to have with God. And the only way that Satan was able to break that relationship was to wound his spirit. And once man's spirit was wounded, he had a way to keep him from being whole. And that which is wounded, it has a tear in it. And the idea of the Holy Ghost is to make you at one again. To heal you. To get past your mind and your heart which is your feelings 
your emotions because your emotions are so fickle. I know some of you, your emotion is up and down. And sometimes you're like, why did I, why did I do that way? Why did I respond? Have you ever said, why did I act? Why did I respond that way? Why does it that someone has control over me? Why does it that a situation can happen and I lose it? Now, if you're in so much control, why do we lose it at times? Why do we get enraged? I tell you why. It's because our spirit man is not whole. You're in this place. And you can identify with the Holy Ghost and what it's communicating. And you want, like the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23, that God's intent, I'm sorry, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 23, you can put that back on the screen, you can put it in the King James. It's God's intent. It's in his word. And too many times we think the word of God is unattainable. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. You can put that on the screen. Won't you stand please? The very God of peace. Sanctify. Make me whole. I've dealt with my emotions many times in living in God and walking in Him. I, I, I oftentimes deal with when I get angry or frustrated, and I know I shouldn't act like that. Sometimes someone makes me so mad, I just, you know, I just want to just go and chop their head off. Sometimes situations come about in my life and I know, you know what, I shouldn't be this way. I, I, I'll be honest, there's sometimes someone to cut me off the road, do something crazy, and just something rises up in me. You know, and next thing you know, I'm pushing on my gas trying to catch up with them like, what is wrong with you? Like, what's wrong with me? Why do I have to respond that way? Why is it always someone else? You see, no one else is really responsible for what's going on in here. And what's going on in my spirit. No one else is responsible for. I want to be made whole, folks. I want to be healed. But I venture to say it starts with our spirit, our inner man. We always want to focus on our heart and our emotions. And we'll cry and we'll cry and we'll cry. What if God would like to go further than our emotions? Just a little softer. Now... The sanctuary is nearly full. Well, I'll just say it's a lot of people. It's not, going, it's not as full as it's going to be. If you're uncomfortable, guess what? It's about to get a whole lot fuller. But don't worry. We'll put the Sunday school kids right there at nursery there from, from jump so we can have some room. But there are people in this place this morning. God led you here this morning. That God can begin to do a work in your spirit. Not just in your heart and in your mind. But in your spirit, your inner man, your inward man. Some of you, you've been looking for answers. To feel whole again. You tried different things, different spiritual things, good things. But deep down in your spirit, there's still, still something empty. Something severed. You may come to this church every week and maybe you're going through those things that I'm communicating. Maybe this is your first time. I want you to come. The Holy Ghost, just like it moved before, 
If you're involved in any type of, of ministry I, or devices, I need you to put that stuff down. God's wanting to touch some people. You can fill up. It may not be enough room here. You can fill the aisles right there. Just come out of your seat. Won't you come? I'm going to give you some instruction. Come on. We have plenty of room. I'm not going to give instruction to everyone that desires to come, come. If you want to come in the seating area, you just make it a move. That's all. You say, this is a He certainly can. Many times God desires for us to make a move in a certain direction. Sign of faith. Now this is what I'm asking you to do. In just a minute. See before it was, you, you know when we were starting before and we got to praying, there was a lot of emotion involved. Now it doesn't mean that emotion won't be in here. But God is desiring to get to your spirit man. And you may not even understand that. But I want you to open your whole being to him. Everything, your thoughts, your mind, your, your, your being to him. And just say, God, I surrender. You see, when you get into a place of surrender and openness, that's when you know you're in, in your spirit. Your spirit man is open. Don't you go ahead and lift your hands right where you are. Won't you begin to communicate to God in your own words. Now, some, some of you, someone may come and pray with you to help you. Just go ahead and lift your hand, close your eyes. And you're going to just acknowledge, Father, I confess I've been wounded. My spirit has been wounded. My heart has been wounded. And Lord, I'm not going to blame anyone else any further. I'm going to get the healing that I need. The Holy Ghost, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ to sweep through this place with your divine providence and search every heart, every mind, and every spirit. I pray as you're knocking on the door of man that they would open up their heart and their spirit to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I acknowledge the state that I'm in. I acknowledge, oh God. That's it. While you're opening up to him, you open your spirit up to him. Go ahead and open up your heart and your emotion. Let the floodgates open to him in the name of Jesus Christ we pray for wholeness and healing right now God beyond our emotion Lord you have created us soul spirit and body you said that we need to worship you in our spirit God, but our spirit, our spirit man, our inner man, our inward man has been dead in sins and in trespasses. And we pray life right now. We pray that your spirit would sweep through this place. You said that you would fill us with rivers of living water. That out of our bellies would flow rivers of living water. Out of our innermost being, out of our inner man, out of our spirit, you wanted to fill our spirit with your spirit. You're able to well, baptize us anew and afresh with your spirit. God, I pray that you would baptize people right now with your spirit. Fill them with your spirit, God, as they respond and repent, confess, and acknowledge. God, we acknowledge our sin, we acknowledge our wound, we acknowledge our hurt. 
in every bit of pain that's it right now and open up to him come on don't focus on that person don't focus on that situation in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ behold Lord I pray wholeness right now I pray wholeness in her spirit Lord in the name of Jesus Christ heal this wound Lord in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ come on be set free I bind every bit of bondage in this house today I bind fear right now in Jesus name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I lose healing right now I lose wholeness right now in the name of Jesus Christ Father flow right now Come on, that's it. Open up your heart. Open up your spirit. I know it may hurt. We're not excusing what has been done. But you're responsible for you. I choose to forgive. I'm not going to hold a grudge. I bind bitterness right now. Come on, in Jesus' name, turn it over to him right now. Every area of anger, every area of guilt and shame, I give it to you. Fill us, oh God. Fill us with your spirit. Jesus' name. Come on, let's just go a little further. It's still early. Let's go a little further. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 